So here we are, finally. Over one year since we've been in this sanctuary together, and I would posit in that year that we have probably learned quite a few things. We have learned what Zoom means, and we've learned how to say the words, you are muted, Alex. We've learned how to wear our masks, masks stylishly, and we've learned how to read people's expressions, read their eyes, rather than their facial expressions. We've learned new phrases this past year, phrases like contact tracing and fomites and shedding virus, which sounds so gross, and infection rates. And at Heartland, we have learned um, not only that we could survive famine, pestilence, disease, not only survive not being together in person, but also in many ways thrive in unexpected and unanticipated ways. In many ways, the gifts of this congregation which were shared in our recorded worship over this past year. I, I can't tell you how many kids and adults uh, participated in our worship, did a liturgy to an empty, empty sanctuary and gave of their time and gifts and talents, not only of all ages, uh, to be a part of that and to represent uh, our church uh, as we could not be in person. Uh, the many interactions and discussions that still occurred over Zoom meetings and discussions and classes. Uh, we still were able to connect and communicate in that way. To the year incredible, what we've learned over this past year, the incredible generosity of this congregation, so much so that we were able to increase our giving uh, to outside local missions. Um, uh, if you'd asked me if we would not be meeting for a year that we could do that, I, I would have been astonished. To the many uh, gifts of leaders uh, in our congregation, from your session to your deacons, who uh, work through long <laughs> Zoom meetings to, to continue our ministry, to visit, uh, our, even though we couldn't visit our homebound, to give them different gifts, the mask ministry, which made thousands of masks, um, our COVID remembrances, both from the morning fence to the, the butterflies that decorated our, 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 our lawn to remember those who had died uh, from COVID-19. It's amazing the ministry and work we did as the body of Christ. We continued to have, uh, we had eight baptisms last year. Uh, we had uh, four or five weddings. Um, we had uh, many opportunities uh, to worship, even if it was from a distance. Despite that, we maintain that we are still the body of Christ, even when we couldn't gather together. It's amazing. But I think we learned more profoundly this past year, this strange and difficult year of COVID-19, the importance of the power of something we probably took for granted over a year ago. And I'm not talking about going to a restaurant. Um, we human beings need, we human beings crave, we human beings yearn for, I think, something we never really think about. And what we yearn for is connection. The year of COVID taught us anything, it is that without human connection, we suffer. And we look around us, the rates of anxiety and depression are, are high. I know our mental health professionals are overwhelmed. My wife, who works for a hospital and works for um, that part of the hospital that deals with mental illness, uh, talks about the acuteness, the acceleration of mental illness in our communities. We talked about uh, we can look at and see that that loss of connection that affected our own kids um, as they have struggled, uh, not being able to, to connect in the ways that we take for granted. We feel loss, grief. I don't know about you, but it's hard for me to remember what happened before last year 
events. It was hard for me to remember what happened in COVID-19. And part of that is that uh, for many of us, we've been isolated in our homes and have yearned for and craved. And part of the joy of today is that we need human beings to be connected. And that maybe we shouldn't be surprised by that deep desire for connection. The largest organ in our body, does anybody know what that is? Skin, exactly. The very organ that contacts us and connects us with the world uh, uh, around us. I think one of the saddest things I heard about some of the folks who were in, in, in nursing homes is that other than a nurse, that they really hadn't touched another human being for months and how much painful and difficult and suffering that expressed. The most, one of the most important organs in our body is the brain, which is all about connections, synapses, and nerves through our body. That the truth is that a human being cannot thrive without connection. And I think physical connection is a significant part of that. That's one of the things that we've learned this year. We, in fact, the truth is that a baby will die unless it's connected. He or she is connected, physically touched and embraced. We need connection. And Pentecost, to me, is all about connection. Because to me, the Holy Spirit is connection. Now, I, I remember years ago, a uh, church I served in Madison, Wisconsin, we engaged in a, a conversation with a synagogue right down the road, a, a Jewish synagogue, and it was an opportunity for us to get to know them, for them to get to know us, and for us to ask questions of their faith and for them to ask questions of our faith. And I know one of the questions that was really pressing on them, they didn't quite get the Trinity, which we kind of replied, well, we don't quite get it either. But, uh, but one of the questions they asked was, well, what is this Holy Spirit? What does that mean? And I remember we, were, we, we, were, we had a hard time kind of describing, what is the Holy Spirit? What do we mean? It's kind of this, this ephemeral thing. One of us said, well, it's kind of a warm, tingly feeling you have inside you. But we couldn't really define or, or, or accurately explain what the Holy Spirit really was. And in many ways, in part, uh, in part of our Presbyterian tradition, which has always emphasized the mind and thinking and theological, the Holy Spirit has always been a little bit difficult for us to kind of understand. And to me, one of the keys to understanding Holy Spirit is that Pentecost Sunday, is that, that sense that the Spirit is about connection. Now, we might think about God, the Creator, is about our creating, the creating the world around us. We might think of the Christ as the one who saves us, um, the one who shows us the way. And the Spirit is the one who connects us to each other. And the truth of this story, the wonder of this story of Pentecost, is it is all about connection. Here the disciples, hiding and huddling in this home, are pushed out of the home to connect. Now, I don't know about you, I, and, and I think we did intentionally choose Pentecost as a great day to start our in-person uh, in-person worship, and very importantly, we thought of it in that way, in part because in some ways we've been huddling and hiding in our homes, haven't we? And needed to be to keep people safe. And somehow that spirit pushes us out now to connect. And what's interesting about this connection, if you look at this story, what's interesting is that it's obvious that the connection is to people from diverse backgrounds, to people who speak many different languages, to people of all races and nations. The description that I, I read for Hayden, the, the pa part of that passage is specific. We want you to understand they come from different parts of the known world. 
and there is this huge diversity. And yet the Spirit connects us to them. Now, I don't know about you, but there's some good news in there for me. Because it seems these days we think of diversity as some kind of barrier to connection, don't we? That if we are diverse, we can't really connect. But the sign of the Holy Spirit especially is kind of a reverse Tower of Babel in which people connect because the Spirit enables them to speak to each other. Each in their own native language. Now, I hadn't really thought about this, but it's interesting to me that language is one of the most profound ways we connect to each other. It's one of the most profound ways that we can, can find connection is to be able to talk to each other. There's good in just being together, but there's so much meaning in using language to connect to each other. And that's particularly challenging these days, in part because, in many ways, language these days seems to be a disconnect. Now, I'm not saying we're speaking different languages as far as English or Spanish or Italian, but if you look at our country, it's like we can't find ways to have a similar language to talk to each other. We're finding it more and more difficult to find the same language to talk to each other. Is that not true? And yet, the promise of Pentecost is that the Spirit will enable us to talk to each other, to find ways to connect each in our own native language. Now, I struggled with that this week as I thought, well, what does it mean? Does it, I'm not going to speak Spanish or I'm not going to speak. What does it mean that I speak the language each in their own native language? And I've often thought of in this story, one of the things that I've often thought of is that while well, these disciples were sent out to the house and they were probably preaching on the corner, and then it occurred to me you know what, that maybe is not the right image to have, that they were out shouting in the streets. And part of the reason that occurred to me was because more and more I've become aware in the year of COVID the importance of conversation. How much I missed just conversation with people above and beyond my wife who stuck with listening to me, boring me for a year. But the importance of just having conversation with neighbors and with each other. And so what occurred to me, the power of conversation to change us, to enable us to engage with other people, to hear who they are. And that maybe Pentecost Sunday, the disciples weren't out there just preaching in the streets. Maybe the disciples were out in the streets engaging people in conversation. Because the truth is, the world won't change through some grand, the world won't only change through some grand protest, or the world won't only change through some grand gesture, but most importantly, maybe we're called into those conversations with those we don't understand and who don't understand us. Maybe the power of the Spirit is not some grand image of us preaching on the corner, but the image of the Spirit guiding us as we invite a neighbor into conversation or as we invite a family member, maybe one we disagree with, into conversation. The truth is, I think, the world has changed. The dream of all of us being connected begins with a conversation. So I invite you this week, as things are loosening up, to engage someone, to listen, to converse, and maybe to speak of the good news of God's love and grace that unites us all. To God be the glory this day and forevermore. Amen.